Well, I'm back, safe and sound, after just an hour delay of the flight from Bilbao. And uh, I shall be putting my things in the wash shortly. But before I do so, I thought that for those of you who have not yet um, embarked on your first Camino, um, not necessarily uh, Camino de Santiago in northern Spain, but uh, anywhere in, in the UK, in California, anywhere, you might want to have a starter pack or a starter idea of what to take. I'm not usually uh, this organised, but uh, for this particular trip where a new space would be at a premium, and if I forgot, oh, look at the light, I could be some sort of alien being. Um, I realised that uh, if I took too much, uh, that, that would be uh, a waste of energy, but also a waste of space. Um, and if I took too little, uh, you don't want to get caught out. If you're walking for, say, 25 kilometres a day, you want what you need, and you don't want what you don't need. So... Um, not like me, I did get organised for this one. I'll show you my book and my list. I bought this notebook for a pound from a, a local retail mall here near Bakewell. And I did actually make a list of every little thing that I would need. And I pretty much stuck to it. And then I put the essential information like passport number, flight numbers, travel times, terminal numbers, parking. I now park at meet and greet. It's much easier and faster in and out. When you're tired, you just want to get back. Uh, you don't want to have to go schlepping around in an airport bus to you car parking if you went in a car so uh, of course I took that with me that's also my journal but the most important thing of course your walking boots or shoes in my case boots these are the most comfortable and most expensive uh, walking shoes boots I've ever had and I just love wearing them. If you haven't got a pair that you just love wearing and that are comfortable on all terrain, you need to invest in a decent pair. Not necessarily boots, by the way. Um, many of the uh, Pellegrinos were wearing what I would call trainers, but actually that's an old fashioned word these days. They, they proper sturdy walking shoes, but they to me they look like a trainer. But um, I only took this pair of boots and I will show you one other pair of uh, slip-on slippers. I might have to edit this. Yep, uh, here they are. I fold flat. These are from Lanzarote, but so I didn't have, and was glad I didn't have, um, a sort of a second pair of going out shoes. I wore these to the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, for example. Absolutely fine. So, uh, I did not have a suitable size uh, backpack or more cheer before I went so I did my a little bit of local research I'm fortunate in Bakewell in that um, I've got four or five outdoor gear shops to choose from this is a 33 litre I don't know what brand name it is to be honest technicals uh, with multiple one two three four pockets um, a webbing thing to hold various things. I'll talk you through them in a moment. Side, side cussets 
for your water bottles and sun cream. Uh, that was 30 quid and it did the job perfectly. Not too big, not too small. And uh, comfy straps. So it is worth taking your time just to choose the right size for you. Um, uh, a friend of mine very kindly sort of discounted me a, a very good quality technical jacket a year or so ago. So I took that and uh, was very glad of it. Uh, it's got inside pockets which are extremely useful for putting hats and bottles of water and stuff in. Uh, and breakfast pastries that you nicked from the hostel breakfast table uh, for your 11 o'clock uh, coffee break stop on, on the Camino. Um, two hats I found essential. I've knocked them both off. This is um, a very simple, I'd call it a bush, a bush hat. But in fact, it's really just uh, a peaked, soft, foldable. It's a sun hat. That's what it is. And believe me, uh, I when you're walking under uh, a, a, a Spanish sun for up to uh, eight hours, you do need something with a brim to keep the sun, well, off your top of your head, but also off your neck. Uh, some people use one of those caps, like a baseball cap. That doesn't work for me, but it might do for you. And in the mornings, even because you leave the hostel at about between seven and eight o'clock, even on a, what's going to be a 24 degree day, the first hour or two is chilly, it's cold. So some sort of warm bubble hat that you can pack away. So that's the, that's the basic sort of gear. But what do you pack in it? Well, I can tell you it took me about three days of packing and unpacking my backpack to uh, get to the point where I knew where things were. This is uh, a half a cross uh, gifted by my mates, an Easter cross that I took with me on the Camino because it was Semana Santa Easter week. Um, this webbing is very useful because you can stuff last minute things in. This is actually, that is the waterproof to go over the top of the, uh, the backpack in case you get caught in a shower and you've got easy access. You don't have to open any zips, just stuff it in the webbing. Ditto these uh, over trousers. Oh, actually, uh, these are not the over trousers. This is the over jacket. Now, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty, not never used, as it happens, um, did not have a heavy shower. I don't think I had a light shower, even whilst I was there 10 days. Very unusual, despite the weather forecast on the app. But I did go prepared, and I really recommend, you must, if you're walking, for eight or 10 hours a day. And if you get caught out in the open, in wet weather, you must have the right gear. I didn't last time, and I'm not kidding, I nearly died. Uh, I, walked for a, I walked for a day in cold driving rain to Burgos. This is, I have to say, I think 12 years ago. And uh, I refused to get a taxi like the others. It really was siding it down. And I didn't have the right wet weather gear. Of course, I had a jacket, and but it wasn't. And I was soaked when the, when I got to the hostel at Burgos. They took one look at me, um, ripped my clothes off, wrapped me in bl multiple blankets, and put me to bed for twenty four hours. I was hypothermic. I think I certainly was out of my out of my head. So this time, instead of spending seventy eighty quid on a proper, <laughs> proper technical uh, rain gear, I went along to my local farmer's depot. In ba Bakewell is in farmer's country. And I bought this fabulous, I think it's fabulous, JCB, completely waterproof, 
taped, la taped lined hoodie, both zipper jacket and uh, over trousers, 20 quid. So let me take you through um, the, com the compartments. Gosh, this, this could be embarrassing, this. There might be things in, in here I wish you, I don't want you to see. Um, let's start here. What, of course, going through, uh, if you're flying anywhere, you need to have your toiletries in a single see-through plastic bag. So I had a toilet bag with my uh, toothbrush, tooth, toothbrush, toothpaste. Um, they did allow nail clippers and scissors. I was surprised at that. There's nothing more important, I think, than um, being able to either trim your toenails because uh, uncomfortable toes in your boots or your shoes is not good. So t I took clippers and scissors just for any running repairs uh, and a, a comb, of course. Uh, hand gel, I made a little mistake with that. I originally put the hand gel in the pocket in the side, put that through the scanner at the airport, and it went beep, 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 beep. It rejected it, so I, I wasted a little time there. That's the toilet bag, and that was always easily accessible. So whenever I stopped, the first thing at a hostel, I could easily take out my toiletries. And then there's the foot care. And I didn't go over the top, I'm not a, and then be pamby sissy with my my uh, my foot care, but uh, I did go prepared this time. Blister plasters. Uh, I used three of them in the end. It was just my right foot heel, a very strange place to get a blister, but I really appreciated that. I there are two views about foot care. My my mate Ed when we walked to Liverpool. His, his uh, foot care regime is be tough to be kind, soak them in vinegar and hit them with a stick until they're hard. Mine's the opposite. I'm really kind to my feet. And I use this simple uh, heel cream all over my feet, remembering to put any plasters, corn plasters or or just to, uh, to take the pressure off, plasters on your feet, onto dry feet first before you put the cream on, because if you put the cream on first, the adhesive plasters don't stick. Uh, I did take adhesive dressings in case I had a, a mishap, didn't need those. Um, wash, clear washproof plasters did need those, even though my skin on my feet was not broken. Um, I use these copiously um, each morning on each feet at the pressure points, which for me was the sort of the soft bridge by the toes on the underside, just to take the pressure of the sock off the skin. And I was very kind to my feet and they were very kind to me. For me, um, supply of Rennie's, other um, indigestion, tablets are available and I did have a corn still have a corn when I went so uh, I used several of these but I made sure that my corn again on my right foot was comfortable and it didn't cause me any grief except I have to say the last day so that's the Outer, the next next level in. Gadgets, well, as you see, my shoes are in there, but also charger with, if you're going to Europe, you need the two pin EU adapter. And uh, that's the charger for my, uh, for my, for my, I've got a power bank. Uh, this is my, second pair of uh, specs in a case to protect them they're proper good ones but i didn't need them 
What else have we got in here? Um, I am in the habit of, I take a uh, bank card reader with me um, because of my various business projects. I never know who I might need to pay while I'm away. And you need one of those if you, if you need to pay somebody new. Gosh, we're getting through it, aren't we? Ah, this is, this is top tip. Top tip of the day is, uh, I can't remember who told me this from, for my first Camino or maybe my second Camino. Uh, put all your clothes, if you want them to keep them dry, in a plastic bag in the main compartment of your backpack. And hey, presto, actually, I never took, I never took the, um, the plastic bag out. I simply repacked every morning from before leaving the hostel, just repack this bag. Now, I might edit this out, but I really want to encourage you that when you go on your Camino or whatever walk it is, less is more. And I took just two of everything because you can wash your stuff. And certainly in Spanish sun, it will dry in the afternoon between getting to the hostel. And they mostly all have uh, hand washing facilities and laundry facilities, washing machine and secadora dryer. Um, Night shirt, um, second pair of walking socks. Actually, they're the, the that's these are my main pair, and I wore these preferably. These are inexpensive ones from Decathlon, and actually, they were the best for my feet. I had some really posh, expensive new ones as well, but they grind grifted. Not sure what the right word is. Um, uh, second pair of socks, bed socks. Um, these pair of, pair of nice merino wool long johns, these, <laughs> this is true. Now that was, why would you take those? Well, it's a good job I did. Firstly, I took them because uh, mornings can be chilly wherever you are. If you're going up a hill, up a mountain, you certainly could do with them f simply for comfort. But I needed them as pyjamas the first night in particular. Um, everybody else had a um, uh, a sleeping bag of one sort or another, except me, of course. So I just put my long johns on, another t-shirt, my um, my rab my rab uh, wrap around jacket fleece, and uh, I slept like a top, um, a lightweight um, shirt sort of Hawaiian shirt. This was uh, my second walking shirt. Short sleeve, they're good. These are the walking pants with zip off legs. So they're both long pants during the day, in the morning, and then you can zipper them. You, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. They've got zipper zippers so that you can Detach the legs and uh, uh, again, um, I bought these especially for this journey, 30 quid. Glad I had them. And there's the, the bottoms that zip on. You have to be patient and just to take the time it takes to zip them back on. These are the over trousers, the JCB Farmers over trousers not used because it didn't rain jump for evenings in town second pair of pants because you can wash them day to day i only took two pair of pants that's my first primary long-sleeved day shirt i wore that often and washed it often cotton and easy dry and i did take Although I didn't really, this is probably uh, the only surplus. I did wear, wear them many times, these uh, shorts with the belt. 
for evenings in the tapas bar or whatever, dancing on the tables, but I could have used my uh, walking trousers. That's up to you. And as I say, just a second pair of pants. And that was, they're going in the wash now, by the way. Got half a load in already. And we're nearly there, folks. Really lightweight. Uh, essential um, financial and ticketing and hostel information in a convenient plastic bag. Now, this was a last minute genius addition. As I was leaving at 7.30 on the Monday morning to go to Manchester Airport for my flight, I thought, oh, I might need a towel. They, don't, they, they might not supply towels. And indeed, they don't. So, what do you do? We can't put a big, thick beach towel in there. So I reached for this. I'm not kidding, folks. I reached for this. This was in here, under there underneath the sink. This is in here. This is what I use to wipe down a dog. If, if if a friend comes with a dog and I want to wipe it down, wipe its paws, I use this old towel. Well, <laughs> it smelt a bit for the first time I used it. But you see, uh, after a shower, uh, wash it out, hang it up to dry in the sun. It was great, lightweight, did the job. And then the precious books. What did I read whilst I was on my Camino? And I'm glad I took this. Marshall Davis, The Non-Dual Gospel of Jesus. Very appropriate for Easter week, I think you'll agree. I could do a review of that in the video another time, couldn't I? Um, microphone. Um, I intended to use this. I usually use this when I record videos um, on the moon. But um, I honestly got into the habit, like I am now, the microphones on the iPhone, this is an iPhone XR, were honestly so um, decent for the purpose. I mean, you know, to be honest, we're, it's not a studio setting. We're we're walking 25 kilometres a day. Anyway, um, I took it but didn't use it. And in the side pockets, I've got uh, a torch, which I LED torch, which I bought for the journey, never used once, and also wet wipes in case you get caught short or. You just want to refresh yourself, never use those, which is fine. You, you don't need everything, but definitely did need this. Factor 50. Uh, the sun was intense on some days and I definitely needed that for the neck and back of the legs. Walking westwards towards Santiago, the sun was always behind me, rises in the east and we're traveling west, so back of the legs, absolutely essential. I read the book. Uh, here's the other book I took to read and didn't read at all. I have read it. Um, David Henry Thoreau's Walden. He built a cabin in the woods, specifically on Walden Pond in uh, Concord, Massachusetts, in the... 18th century. This is a sort of diatribe against modern society, the age of individualism. And you will notice, I've read it before, and it's heavily, heavily underlined. Um, it had a big impression. The first time I read it, I actually read it in Shanks cabin, that's, I'm kidding you not, that's what it's actually called, in Cumbria, by a stream where I went fishing, didn't catch anything, and I was happy as a sandboy, what, I don't know what the right expression is, 
And so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to build my cabin in the woods by a pond uh, and finish writing my book, Mistaken Identity. Uh, I've already shown you my own uh, notebook for the journey. And uh, this is where, where I did my usual writings, uh, journal writings. I've kept a journal for nearly 30 years now. But this I took along as well. So that's four books. Why a second notebook? Because I was also doing a an online writing course with Natalie Goldberg, along with about 300 others. And there were two online tutorials a week. And so, practice, part one, three tools for writing. One, pen, two, paper, three, mind. <laughs> I love it. Actually, it's not just about techniques of writing and the practice of writing. Write about your own suffering. Gosh, it's actually more than that. It's it's a Zen practice course, really. Or for me as Christian, I would say a Christian mystic meditation course as well. And so uh, we would do two exercises each, a Zoom session on a Wednesday and a Saturday. That's two, two each, so four a week. My most recent one on Wednesday was... I went to a bar in Burgos and uh, noted a few things and I called this entry the bar of lost rock and roll souls. So I also made good use of my time by continuing with my month long writer's course. That's enough for that. I hope that has give you a, uh, a very clear idea of what you might like to consider taking with you on your Camino. Buon Camino.